No one tries harder than Seat to inject some sparkle into the Volkswagen group, and in recent times their reputation is growing for creating some pretty polished performers. Their masters in Germany have put pay to previous quality problems with a policy of platform sharing, which has the benefit of keeping costs down as well. How much room that leaves for individuality is debatable, but see it having a good go at being different. And since the Ibiza's recent facelift, it's completely transformed. These rather funky taillights flank a large see it badge at the back, which leaves you in no doubt as to what's just left you in its wake. The new face at the front sets it apart from the VW Polo that it shares a lot of its oily bits with. And these 16-inch alloy wheels give it a rather aggressive look. But one thing that you won't find in the VW Polo lives under here. This is the same 1.8 20-valve engine, albeit in a lower state of tune, than you'll find in the Audi TT. It's got 156 brake horsepower and will shoot the Ibiza from 0 to 60 in amazing 7.9 seconds, going on and up to over 130 miles an hour. Unfortunately, the problem with having an interior that's influenced by Germanic quality control means that you get a rather dark and austere fascia. Personally, I could live with that because the logical layout and the quality feel to all the switches and fittings mean that you wouldn't have to put up with bits falling off all the time. Even if the plastics are a little hard in places, our only other niggle is these rather attractive sports seats actually nip the hips of all but the slimmest of drivers. 156 brake horsepower in a car smaller, lighter and cheaper than a Golf is normally a recipe for big grins which it is, but only for out-of-town use, because the clutch and the throttle response is really quite unsubtle for those city cues. The clutch in particular is quite heavy and takes a lot of getting used to. The engine feels like it's been held back on a leash. Above 2,000 RPM, there's a healthy pull, but if you hold the gears past 3,500 RPM, all hell breaks loose as the turbo really kicks in. So is it a classic hot hatch? Well. Yes and no. I mean, compare it to a sophisticated chassis that you'd find in the Peugeot 205 or 306 GTI. And the Cupra, well, it's really a bit of a brute. The steering doesn't communicate with you very much. And if anything, the Cupra comes across like a miniature TVR. The power is similarly addictive, the chassis similarly unsophisticated. There's plenty of grip at low speeds, but get it out onto the open roads and you'll feel all four wheels start to drift as it pushes wide on fast corners. But once you get used to the Ibiza's lively personality, you can really quite enjoy it. From there on, it's fun all the way. Low speed tram lining seems to disappear as the speed rises and you'll find yourself pressing harder and the grin on your face getting even wider. Now, before you start worrying about how much this is going to rip a hole in your wallet, the best bit is yet to come, because the Cupra is a surprising £12,995. So what do you get for a whisker under 13 grand? Well, quite a bit of kit, actually. A trip computer, set and forget air conditioning, an integrated six-speaker stereo and a part leather interior. And, of course, that addictive performance. Putting an engine normally associated with a class above in the Ibiza has caused the opposition a bit of a dilemma. I suppose the closest in concept is the Renault Clio 172, but somehow the Ibiza's just got more character. The Spanish would say it's Latin flair. We would say... Long may it continue.